time of the month when we take stock of how activity is shaping up on Deal Street. Grant Thornton has released their Deal Tracker report for activity in the first half of 2016. Uh, it's mostly been a resilient period with transactions over $21.8 billion across 750 deals. But to take a closer look at the trends, I'm now joined by Prashant Mehra, partner at Grant Thornton. Hi, Prashant. Thank you so much for taking out the time to join us today uh, to discuss uh, how the deal activity shaped up in the first half of 2016. So, um, from my perusal of the report, it seems that uh, domestic deals have mostly driven activity up. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what sense are you getting from this? Uh, uh, so foreign investors, uh, are they shying away uh, due to weak sentiment or is, are there other factors at play here? Um, hi. Uh, you know, the overall deal activity at about $22, $23 billion is, is, is a notch above what we saw in the same period last year. Uh, considering that last year we were still riding on the optimism created by the new government uh, and this year it's kind of died out. I think the numbers are very impressive, uh, keeping that in view. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, you know, a large part of the growth, uh, which is a substantial $15.7 billion or so, has been driven by uh, domestic m &A as well as uh, outbound transactions. Uh, domestic m and you know, I mean, clearly, I think the economy was uh, <clears throat> waiting for quite some time in terms of uh, looking at some consolidations, and we finally seeing those shades of consolidation come into view, uh, which is why we see substantial growth in domestic m and So it, it was it was just waiting to happen, and I think the, the flurry has already started. Uh, the other uh, bit which has led to the growth is the interest in the outbound transactions. Uh, I mean, the global uh, economy is... is is obviously not at a very good standing. Uh, there is uh, riding growth factors in the Indian economy. So there is a lot of outbound interest, which is why some of these transactions are happening. Uh, inbound is, is, is still, you know, resilient, but we hope to see some action there as well in the next couple of months. Right, Prashant. Um, uh, also, what we saw were quite a few billion-dollar deals. Now, you had that JP Ultratech deal during the period. You had the Blackstone Emphasis deal, uh, both uh, billion-dollar deals in their own regard. There were other similar deals. So, essentially, the large deals uh, seem to have made up for uh, a lack of volumes uh, going by the report. Um, is, is the drop in volumes a concern? Do you see it as a concern going forward? I know, that at least in this time, the large deals kind of made up for... Um, the low volumes, but uh, that will not happen going forward, perhaps might not happen every quarter. Uh, do you see this as a, a concern going forward? Um, no, not really. I don't see that as a concern from what I've been reading and following. I think there are still a few very large transactions which are in the pipeline at various stages. So the next quarter or two, we'll see them unfold. Uh, uh, large transactions is actually a good thing. I think we were waiting for that to happen. Uh, I think now with the uh, macroeconomic factors all being sustainable for the last couple of halves, uh, I think there is now increasing confidence that you know the economy is here to stay, if not grow, which is why we're seeing some of these large transactions. Volumes is definitely not a concern, uh, I, and I think going forward we would the we would see certain uh, sustainability in terms of these large big ticket transactions. Right, Prashant, also, uh, what's your view on the startup space? What kind of sense are you getting now? To quote uh, one of your colleagues in your report, Kinari Gandhi, now she's written, there's ambiguity around the benefits proposed under the Startup India, uh, stand, uh, startup India scheme initiative launched by the government in January 2016. The volumes in the space in the first half of 2016 have only increased driven by the angel and seed rounds of funding. So uh, the initiatives or schemes launched by the government per se have not really boosted the sector. It's just individual seed uh, investors that have uh, uh, the startup sector actually going. In fact, according to your report, I can tell that uh, the startup space has been doing well. What's your indication? Are, are these schemes working or, um, or will they just have to pull through on their own? Uh so, you know, it's a little unfair to start judging these reforms and schemes uh, 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 with the fact that, you know, we're sitting at the fifth month after these schemes have been launched. Uh, they were launched sometime in December and January, so I think we would need to give them a couple of quarters before we actually see the results of that. Uh, but yes, you know, as far as the startup activity is concerned, I would put it into two categories. One, which is pure startup space, you know, angel VC investments, as you rightly mentioned. There we're continuing to see interest. Uh, 
uh, and the other is a more matured startups and I think from a going forward perspective uh, though these companies have historically raised good amounts of money but you know going forward any startup which has a sustainable business model has an innovative business model and a strong one uh, would see continuing investments and probably higher rounds of investment as well. Right, Prashant. Uh, unfortunately, that's all we have time for on this show. But uh, we'd love to talk to you sometime soon in more detail. But thank you so much for joining us with all uh, the details of that report and your trend analysis. And